they it usually only picks up my voice. So um, very rarely does it pick up everybody's voices. So uh, we're going to consider the values of the functions f and g of x given below. Find each of the following function values or limits. Okay, so we're going to start with this one right here in A. Um, we know that one from last year, right? We talked about this last year. I purposely, um, what should we call it, made sure we did this with graphs last year because I knew it was coming, okay? So um, it, this is saying it's a co composition of functions, which we talked about last week, okay? Um, I got to take the four and put it into where? G. G. So I'm going to go to my G graph, okay? I am going to find four, okay? And I'm going to read the y value off the graph. So what's the y value at 4? 6. So I'm going to substitute 6 in for that. I'm going to put, kind of surround it with whatever else was left behind that I didn't use yet. Now this is saying take 6 and plug it into f. So I'm going to go to my f graph. I'm going to find 6. Ooh, look at 6. It's got all kinds of craziness going on. Is it continuous? Now, remember, our definition of continuous right now is you can draw it without picking up your pencil. Is there any way I'm going to draw that without picking up my pencil? No. no. Okay, but where is there an actual value for that x value of 6? Where is there an actual y value? The 4. The 4, right? This piece right here is an actual value because you have a nice solid dot. So our y value for 6 is equal to 4. And now it's going to... So it's equal to 4. Okay. All right. B is a little bit different. Okay. So, and luckily I think I caught it before I taught it to you guys because I totally messed up teaching it the third period. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm, our composition, actually, let me go back and look at that definition of the composition of limit thing. Okay. So this was what we talked about last week. When we have the limit of a composite function, we are we learned, hey, we're allowed to take that that first that outer function and move it outside and find the limit of the inside function. This works, and this is the part that I missed. As long as the outside function is continuous. If the outside function isn't continuous, we have to do something else. Okay? And that's the part that I that I was missing, but you're gonna see what we have to do just in just a second here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start by writing this f outside. So f of the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x. Okay, so I'm going to start by examining my g function. I'm going to examine what the limit is as I approach 4. Okay, so I'm going to erase kind of what I have there. All right, I'm going to start looking as I am approaching 4. What am I getting when I come from the left side? Six. Six. Okay, as I'm approaching four, what am I getting when I'm coming from the right side? Six. So I know that for this piece here, and I'm writing this kind of in a weird spot on purpose. I'm leaving a gap on purpose, okay? I am getting six, okay? Here's the problem. If I go back and I look at f of six, because that's what should be my next thing, right? I should be looking at f of six. When I look at f of 6, what's the problem here? Is it continuous? No. no. So that means I can't just plug in my 6. If it was continuous, I could just plug in my 6. All right? So I've got to, this is really means something else when it's in this format. Okay? When I looked at the G and I was doing my approach, did I approach that point from above the point or below the point? Below, and it doesn't hurt to write that down. I was approaching from below. Okay, which if I'm going to write below, wouldn't that be something that is a minus? So what this really means is I know that as X approach, I'm going to find the limit as X approaches six from the left of F of X. So I, when I have, when I discontinuous, I don't have continuity, okay? I have to take whatever value I got from uh, where I had ever evaluated this, and I have to determine, am I above it or below it? And that becomes the limit of the outer function, okay? 
now it's not bad. I go to my outer function. I'm going to go to f of 6 from the left side. So f of 6 from the left side ends up being 1. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be a solid dot. It can be an open dot. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at C. Okay. So I'm going to take 0 and plug it into where? G. Okay, so here's my G. I'm looking at it from the left. I'm looking at it from the right. What's my Y value? Negative 2. No definitely negative two. I probably wrote that too high up though. Oh no, that's fine on this one. Never mind. This isn't, this is a, just a straight composition. All right. I'm going to go to F. I'm going to take the negative two and plug it into F. So again, it's discontinuous, but we're not doing a limit right now. Okay. So what value do I have at negative two? What's the actual Y value? One. Good. One. It's like somebody taught you that really well last year. You learned it really well last year. All right, negative one. Okay, let's look at D. Okay, so we need to find the limit as X is approaching zero of F of G of X. I'm gonna take the F outside. And so we've got the limit as X approaches zero of G of X. Okay. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to erase kind of what's there from before. Okay. So as I am approaching zero from the left, what Y value am I going to? I think I heard negative two. As I'm coming at it from the right, what Y value am I going to? Negative two. Was I just above it or below it? On my approach, am I above the am I above, above. the zero or below it? Above. I'm approaching from above. Okay. So I know that this was an above approach. I'm just going to write that word there for a second. So I know that I've got, um, what did we say? We said it was negative two. Okay. I was coming at it from above. All right. I need to look and see if I'm continuous or discontinuous. I'm kind of setting up because I know what's coming. All right, so I'm going to my F graph, and I'm going to look at negative 2. All right, F at negative 2, is it continuous? No. no, so I need to take the limit. So if it's not continuous, we take the limit. All right, so this time I'm going back to look. I'm taking the limit from the right side of F of X. So going back to here. From the right side is here, right? Approaching from the right, what Y value do I go to? Three. Three. Good job. Okay. Y'all doing okay so far? Amazing. Amazing. Great. I'm glad we're amazing. All right. Let's look at E. So E is still a function composition. It just looks a little different. It's not quite as straightforward. I'm going to start it the same way I did my other function compositions. Okay. I'm going to take the G and bring it out front. And I'm going to find the limit as X approaches six from the left, one minus F of X. Okay. One of our limit properties that we talked about last week was that we are able to take the limit. If we can't figure out the limit from where it's at, I can take the limit of something that's being added and subtracted separately. So I'm going to separate that in this case. So I've got the limit as X approaches six from the left of one minus the limit as X approaches six from the left of F of X. Give you a minute to catch up because I know sometimes I write fast and you're trying to listen and write. We're going to have time to spare. Are we finishing this whole thing? We're going to, we, all we have to do is like three and a half more examples. That's it. That'll be it on this one. Because remember, we're finishing this up from last week. I'm not doing another one today.
Unless you want me to. No. All right. I can. No. Oh, you appreciate the offer. Okay, thanks. Okay. I figured this was enough because we had our guest speaker today. I planned just enough to fit in after a guest speaker. All right, we ready? Okay, so if we think about this chunk right here, okay, so let's think about what that looks like on a graph. I draw a lot of pictures that aren't perfect. I just want to be able to, to visualize what's going on, okay? That's a horizontal line at one. What's the limit always, no matter which direction or what point I'm coming at? It's always one, isn't it? Yeah. So this value right here is, and I'm just going to kind of write some scratch work under here, is a one, always. Okay, now I'm going to go to my F graph and I'm going to find the limit as F is approaching six from which direction, left or right? Yeah. Left. Okay, so I got to go to the left. So I'm going to my F graph. Okay, I'm going to erase what's there. We said six, right? Positive six? No. I thought it was positive six. No, it is positive. Okay. All right, so there's six. I'm coming in from the left. What Y value am I approaching? One. Good. Okay, here's the problem. What's one minus one? Zero. zero. Okay, so I'm going to write the zero down, but notice I'm not, I'm purposely not writing a whole lot right now. I need to figure out what's going on at g of zero, if it's continuous or not continuous. So let's look before I get too far into this. All right, what do we know at g of zero? Is it continuous? Yes. Okay, so this is the only one we've had like this. I don't have to do the limit. I can just plug in, I can just use the y value. So what's the y value right there? Two. Negative two. But only if it's what? Continuous. continuous. You might want to write this. This one was continuous. Continuous at x equal to zero. Okay. You might want to make a note. I know I didn't write the note, but you want to might want to make a note on the other ones that they were not continuous, and that's why we had to do the limit. Remember, sometimes it's more important what I say than what I write. Yes, Amy. Why g was equal to two? Sure. Okay. Did you understand how we got the zero? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go to the G graph. Okay. So I'm on my G graph right now. Okay. I'm noticing that the G graph is continuous this time, right? I don't have to pick up my pencil at zero. Okay. So I, I, I don't have to pick up my pencil to draw that piece of it. So in this case, I can just read the Y value off the graph. So my X value is zero. If I were to write this coordinate, it would be zero, negative two. So my Y value I would read is negative two. We okay now? Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, this one's a little bit different, okay? We're going to visualize the graph of 15 minus x squared here in a second. The first thing, though, I'm going to take that f and I'm going to write it out front. So we've got f of the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 15 minus x squared. Okay, 15 minus x squared is a graph we should sort of know. At least have an idea of what it looks like, okay? We're going to sketch the, what the idea should look like, okay? So I'm going to sketch the graph right here, okay? What does the squared graph look like? You all should know that. It's a parabola, okay? What shape does a parabola make? It's a U, okay? Should it be right side up or upside down? Why is it upside down? It's negative in front. How high up should I make that vertex? It should be up at 15, right? Because that's the Y value right there. So I'm going to make it up at 15. I know it comes upside down like this. Okay. So at some point, I've got to approach 3 from the right side. Okay, so let's say that 3 is, I don't know, right here. As I'm coming at 3 from the right side, I'm going to hit a y value. Did I just come at 3 from the right side by being above 3 or below 3 on the graph? It looks below, right? Because I, I probably used a totally bad color, right? Let me use the blue. So 
So as I'm approaching yeah. from the right side, I'm below the point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I wrote that down so my brain registers that in a minute, okay? Because I, I made, I did that connection. The question is, what y value did I actually approach? Could I figure that out? Do I have a function? What could I do? Oh, we could plug it in. We can. Okay, so what's three squared? Nine. 15 minus nine is? So this thing here was a six in there, right? I know, it's rough. Had to put some pre-algebra in there. Okay, so we know we got six. Um, we know we came at it from below. So we have as X approaches six from below or from the left, of our function. I'm assuming we're not continuous. I need to probably go look, right? Okay, let's look at our F graph. I think I have another F graph right over here. I copied and pasted it a few times. Okay, so am I continuous at six? No, we said we wanted to come from the left. Okay, so from the left, what does the Y value approach? One. The most complicated part is getting it rewritten as that limit, right? Once you've got it in there, the limit part is easy, right? And reading the limit off the graph is, is super easy. It's just that one little piece, okay? Makes it a little bit more complicated. All right, let's see if we can squeeze in. We've still got 10 minutes. We can squeeze in the last two with time to spare. Okay. This one's a little bit trickier, okay? All right, so I'm still going to take that G and put it where? On the outside. Okay, so let's do that. So g of the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 2 minus x squared. Okay. Now, um, I need, I'm going to look at this shape again, right? What shape do we have? Parabola, right side up, upside down. Upside down. Okay, so I'm going to kind of start sketching it. Um, and how high up should it be? Two. Okay, so one, two. All right, let's see. If I put in, I don't know, let's just draw it and let's see what happens here. Okay, so we're supposed to be approaching for two. I don't really know where two is just by that sketch, but could I plug two in here? figure it out yeah we kind of started plugging numbers into limits last week right towards the end of the week so i'm going to just plug a two in off to the side here i'm going two squared so let's see two minus what's two squared four so ooh, it should be at negative two huh so let's look at that negative two is where two should be right i'm kind of missing it here close enough oh i didn't change colors close enough okay so do you see how, if I'm coming at this from the left side, let me get out a totally, let's see, this purpley color. Coming at it from the left, what Y value did we approach? Negative two. Negative two. Was that above or below? Above. It was an above approach, right? Because I was above this point, okay, as I was coming down on it. So would that be a plus or a minus sign? Plus, plus sign, so we've got the limit. Oh, that's not where I wanted to write the word limit, is it? Okay, so this is the X approaches, and you put the limit up here. And we're going to do the G. I'm assuming it's not continuous, because that's what we've been doing, but we really need to go look. Okay, let's go look. So we've got our G graph, and we're looking at negative 2, correct? Okay, so there's negative two. Was it continuous? No. no, good assumption. Okay, did we say, was it the right or the left? The right. Okay, so as I'm coming at negative two from the right side, what Y value did I go to? Zero. Zero, good job. You guys are getting the benefit of me doing a really bad job teaching this during third period. So, you guys get the better lesson. I, my brain grew a lot during third period today. And I even studied this yesterday too, actually this morning at four, but I started yesterday. Okay.
Let's take a look at this last one here. Okay. And we should have a few minutes to spare. So again, what am I going to do with this F? Put it on the outside. So F of the limit as X approaches negative two from the left of F of X. Okay. I believe this guy right here is my F graph. Here's negative two. Is it continuous at negative two? No, that doesn't matter yet. But from the left, what y value am I approaching? Negative two. Negative two. So I know that I'm coming. Oh, we already know, don't we? Is it continuous at negative two? No. no. So we know we have to do the, the limit, right? We know we're going to have to do this. Now, when I was coming at this, I was coming at it from the left side. Was I above it or below it? I was above it. So what sign do I put on this negative two here? Positive. Excellent. And then this is F of X. Okay. All right. So we're going to do, we're going to go one more time and look at this graph. We're coming at negative two now from the right side. What Y value does it go to? Three. Okay. Got it. Make sure you try. I, this is one I would not. I go back and find whatever the one five assignment was. It was on last week's, right? But I said it wasn't due till this Friday. So, it did it close? Okay, I will. I will reopen AP Classroom. I thought I left it open till the end, so I need to re. I'll go. I'll go look and reopen AP Classroom. Okay. If you are one of the people who has yet to even log into any of the systems, I highly suggest you do that. Okay. All right. Don't neglect the assignments this week. Okay. Because we are looking at still quizzing on Friday again. Yeah. If you want, I can open it up right now and start. Did you fill one out? Yes, you did. Yeah. Give me just a minute, Alondra, and I'll have it up. Okay. Ah! Okay, I'm going to shut that off. Okay, Otis.